Patrick and welcome to faithpro.org. Uh, at faithpro.org, we endeavor to give you biblical answers to living life to the fullest. How do we live life to the fullest? By following God. God is so awesome. The only way to God is Jesus. Uh, John uh, 14.6 says that He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one gets to the Father what, but by Him. Praise God. Don't you want to know Jesus? He wants to know you. Praise God. Um, today I'd like to talk about should a Christian drink beer, wine, or any alcoholic drinks? Should a Christian drink beer, wine, or any alcoholic drinks? Alcohol. 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 Is it, is it right for a Christian to drink? This is a uh, question that's debated quite a bit. Actually, it's not really debated so much in my circles, but it is debated in circles that um, uh, other churches I see. You know, I've heard of Christians getting drunk and so forth. I actually went to a party, and uh, the lady was a leader of a Bible study in, in central Tokyo, and um, they were all getting buzzed, and they were all laughing, and I was laughing and fine, uh, without touching the alcohol. But um, what's God's view on alcohol? If you look in the Bible, it says in 1 Timothy 5.23, Paul tells uh, his, um, one of his uh, pastors in one of the churches that he founded that um, take a little bit of drink um, you know, for your stomach. And so some people say, well, a little bit of drinking is okay. You know what? Um, that's what I used to think. But uh, what does the Bible say about drinking? In the Bible, if you search on alcohol, you know, of course, there's no Jack Daniels or there's no um, Jimmy Bean or all, the, all these various hard liquors um, like we see in the world today. But in the Bible, um, we see wine. And wine, there's variations on wine. But if you search on the word wine in the New King James Version of the Bible, you'll find that it's listed 238 times. And the Bible, most of the time, speaks negatively about drinking wine. If you get into Proverbs, you'll find about, a lot about being a drunkard. And uh, being a drunkard is not a good thing. So, um, should a Christian drink? Well, if you look in Genesis 9.22, it talks about Noah. And after the ark landed, um, Noah got buzzed. And um, uh, he... He drank too much and he was there um, and his sons had to cover him up and it was shameful. Uh, then later on we see Lot's daughters getting their father drunk so that they, that, that they could have an incestuous relationship with him. See, getting into alcohol, there's a lot, if you look in the Word of God, if you look at it with an open mind, you're going to see a lot of negativity. There's a lot of negative about um, alcohol uh, and about um, th this. Because basically if you think about it, alcohol is a drug. It inhibits your mind. The enemy wants to attack you in the mind. And so if the enemy can get you in, uh, unsensitive uh, to um, the situation, if it gets you insensitive to the situation um, through drugs, through alcohol, through, uh, through something, that's when the enemy attacks the devil and the, um, the demons of hell. So uh, one day um, I went uh, and I ended up having a drink. I remember um, they had a um, champagne and cake at one of my friend's offices. And uh, it was like a birthday cake and champagne. And I drank it and I got a super bad headache. And um, I went home and I was talking to with, with my wife and we were talking about it. And we, this is what I concluded. What are the benefits of drinking? And after that experience, these are what, uh, the three things that my wife and I talked about. Drinking is expensive. You do things that you regret later when you drink. And then the third thing is alcohol is not only unhealthy, meaning it damages your liver and your brain, but it makes you fat. There's no benefit to drinking. Oh, but Jesus turned the water to the wine. Well, was it really that very strong alcoholic drink that we have today? Or was it more like a grape juice? Well, I think the latter. But also when I look, when I look through the Word of God, in 1 Peter 2.9, it says that we are to be a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. The, the whole world drinks. Does that mean that we need a drink to get our, our happiness? Absolutely not. You know, the Bible says to be filled with the Spirit, speaking to other, one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, Ephesians 5.18. So it doesn't mean that we should be taking these mind-altering substances into our body. I want to encourage you today, if you drink, don't use that as an excuse. Um, pray about it and ask the Holy Spirit, is it right for me to drink or not? 
I personally believe it's wrong. Why? Because I, it, would, it, does, it puts you in a situation where you can't control yourself. I, don't, I choose not to drink because I see people who drink get themselves in trouble. I also see people who drink don't seem to go as deep spiritually. I'm being very direct and speaking from my heart on this because I, I don't, um, there's so much misconception and oh, we can have wine, the Bible says wine's okay. I hear too much of that. And I decided that out of our church, I'm going to tell people, no, it's not okay to drink. I used to say, oh, Paul told Timothy it's okay to drink a little bit. But you know what? If you look at these hundreds of times that wine is mentioned in the Bible, alcohol is mentioned in the Bible, people get messed up because of that. We are to be filled with the Spirit, not filled with wine. This is Spencer Patrick. Thank you for joining me on faithpro.org.